I often hear from the Muslims that the Quran accurately predicted the Big Bang, that is, the process via which our universe originated. It is arguably touted as the number one scientific miracle in the Quran. This miraculous verse reads as follows. Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were joined together in parenthesis as one unit of creation before we clove them asunder? We made from water every living thing. Will they not then believe? I have put here the top three English translations. Only the first sentence supposedly tells us about the Big Bang miracle. I am going to show you that this sentence, which is about two lines in length, has not just one, but multiple very serious problems. So I am going to categorically debunk this verse once and for all. Since this video is slightly longish, I am giving a quick summary right in the beginning. Point number one, recycling old stories. The concept that the heavens and the earth were joined together and then got separated is a popular ancient myth, recycled in many religions and cultures, and predates Islam by at least 2700 years. The origin of this myth is the Epic of Gilgamesh, which is the oldest surviving book in the world. Point number two, the first part of the verse do not the unbelievers see or realize doesn't make any sense. Is the origin of the universe something that can be seen by our eyes or is it something extremely obvious that anyone can realize? Centuries of scientific inquiry, advanced mathematics and high-tech telescopes were necessary to understand how the universe originated. Point number three. This verse is nonsensical and not even remotely related to the Big Bang Theory. And in fact, it violates the scientific understanding of the universe that follows from the Big Bang Theory. I will disprove this miracle claim in multiple ways, including a standard technique used in mathematical logic called the proof or disproof by contradiction. Alright, now that I have given the summary, Let's go through the different issues with Surah 21 verse 30 one by one. So before we even proceed and scrutinize the scientific merit of this verse, the first issue is about the originality. If the concept of heaven and earth existing as a joint entity and then splitting apart predates the revelation of the Quran, then the scientific miracle claim of this verse simply falls apart. Have you ever heard about the Epic of Gilgamesh? It is an epic ancient Sumerian poem and is often regarded as the earliest surviving great work of literature. Gilgamesh was the king of Uruk and this book dates back to 2100 BC. You can read the entire Epic of Gilgamesh online from Oxford University's Sumerian Literature Collection. It is a long and beautiful poetry and a must read. Let's go to the Gilgamesh, Enkidu and the Netherworld poem. The link has been added in the description so that you can enjoy this beautiful poetry and realize the level of poetry that existed 2700 years before the Quran was revealed. I have underlined some relevant text here and as you can see, the poem is talking about a long distant past when the heavens and the earth got separated from each other. What a shame! Another arts institute of very high repute, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, gives a nice summary of this creation myth. Let's see what their website has to say. Mesopotamians were very creative. There are quite a few Mesopotamian creation myths, but the most famous one is that of Gilgamesh. Let's read the relevant stuff. A Sumerian myth known today as Gilgamesh and the Netherworld opens with a mythological prologue. It assumes that the gods and the universe already exist 
and that once a long time ago the heavens and the earth were united only later to be split apart hmm so if you believe that surah 21 verse 30 is a clear proof of the big bang then unfortunately for you big bang was predicted at least 2700 years before the quran was revealed quran is simply recycling a popular creation myth and has been caught red-handed in today's world this would be considered as a plagiarism and violation of intellectual property rights a book that i will highly recommend everyone particularly muslims to read is this one creation myths of the world by david adams Liming. you will find time and again in different creation myths that the heavens and the earth were initially joined and then got split some examples where this concept appears with their own seasonings and spices added are the book of genesis the greek the roman and the egyptian mythology we find a very important thing mentioned in surah 8 verse 31 and when our verses are recited to them they say we have heard if we willed we could say something like this this is not but legends of the former peoples so Muhammad was confronted by his contemporaries for recycling old stories. Now you see that everything fits together. We proved that the creation story of the Quran is an old myth. In addition, the Quran confirms that Muhammad was confronted by other people for recycling old stories. So this is a clear and shut case. We first notice that the verse is posed in the form of a question criticizing the unbelievers, as if how the universe originated is something extremely obvious which the disbelievers either fail to physically see or realize. In fact, the Arabic word used here is yara, which literally means to see by your eyes. Sahih International cleverly replaced see by not considered. Big Bang happened 13.8 billion years ago. Earth came into existence 4.5 billion years ago. And the Homo sapiens are roughly 300,000 years old creatures. So physically seeing Big Bang makes absolutely no sense. Now if one argues that here the word see is figurative not physical, I would say a better choice of word could have brought more clarity, especially because Quran claims to be a book that is absolutely clear with detailed explanations. I am in a good mood, so I will overlook this linguistic issue and assume hereafter that it meant something like to consider or realize. All right. It seems to me that Allah the all-knowing being and the creator of everything is suffering from dementia and has forgotten the amount of brain and eyesight he has given to us humans. Allah is expecting humans, whether living now or 14 centuries ago, to have eyes like powerful astronomical telescopes and brains that contains the intelligence of Einstein, Newton, Maxwell, Gauss and all famous physicists and mathematicians you can think of. Otherwise, it is impossible for a human being to realize Big Bang as an obvious fact. Even today, common people have almost no clue what Big Bang actually means. It is in the early 20th century, after the invention of sophisticated telescopes, the famous astronomer Edwin Hubble observed that the further a galaxy is from Earth, the faster it is moving. He concluded that the universe is expanding, a corollary of which is that the universe started at one point in space at the time of the Big Bang. The mathematical details to support the expanding universe theory was independently given by Lemeth and Friedman 
and both these geniuses made good use of Einstein's theory of relativity in their derivations. Through the refinement of scientific knowledge over centuries and the all-round effort by multiple genius minds led to the development of the Big Bang Theory. It is definitely not something that is completely obvious to a random person, whether living now or 14 centuries ago. So we have established that the first part, highlighted in orange, makes no sense at all. Even though I have been generous and overlooked the linguistic issue with the Arabic word Yara, unfortunately, my generosity didn't help this verse that much. I think that this part is a very, very stupid mistake. We come to the next part of this verse highlighted in orange. The heavens and the earth were joined together in parenthesis as one unit of creation before we clove them asunder. Many Muslims believe that this part is storing the real Big Bang miracle. Now, I am in two minds. Should I debunk the creation story of the Quran or that in the Epic of Gilgamesh? Since Quran has simply plagiarized the creation myth of the Epic of Gilgamesh, to be fair, I should criticize the actual tweet, not the retweet. But given that debunking one just debunks the other, I am simply going to debunk this Quran verse. First, let's look at a reasonably good analogy of this creation narrative. The glass bottle and the metal cap initially exist together as a unit, but after the action of the bottle opener, they separate out. You may ask, what is the proof that they have separated out? Well, the answer is pretty simple. After the action of the bottle opener, both the glass bottle and the metal cap exist as separate entities. Likewise, if the heaven and the earth were joined together as a unit, then the Big Bang happened and they separated out. This would imply that right after the Big Bang, both the heavens and the earth must exist as distinct entities. If earth is not in the picture right after the Big Bang happened, then separation of heavens and the earth makes no sense, right? But the universe is 13.7 billion years old and the earth is only 4.5 billion years old. In other words, the earth came into existence 9 billion years after the Big Bang. 9 billion years. This straightforwardly shows that the creation narrative of Surah 21 verse 30 is not even remotely related to the Big Bang theory. And in fact, it completely contradicts the scientific understanding of the origin and evolution of the universe. See, this is our Milky Way galaxy, which is one of the billions and billions of galaxies in our universe. Even after you put all the galaxies together, the universe still has 99.9999999% of empty space. We can't even imagine how big the universe is. In the astronomical context, the Earth is nothing but an insignificant speck of dust. Separating Earth from space makes no sense at all. In fact, that's a very stupid statement. The Earth is a part of the solar system, which is a part of the Milky Way galaxy, and Milky Way galaxy is one of the billions of galaxies in the universe. Now, you have already figured out that the claims in this verse, rather in the Epic of Gilgamesh, are nonsense. To show in a concrete way that this verse contradicts with the Big Bang Theory, I will use a formal and a very standard technique used in mathematical logic known as proof or disproof by contradiction. The idea is as follows. In order to prove a statement to be true, you have to show that the contradictory statement is false. And if the contradictory statement 
turns out to be true, then the original statement must be false. In other words, only one of them can be true. Since Earth formed 9 billion years after the Big Bang, heavens and Earth cannot exist as a joint entity during the Big Bang and there is no question of them separating out. This is also confirmed by the numerical simulations of the Big Bang. Let's read the contradictory statement carefully. The heavens and the earth were not a joined entity, so we did not separate them. Does it violate the Big Bang narrative? No. It is in line with the scientific understanding of the universe that follows from the Big Bang theory. So what does this straightforwardly imply? The Quran verse clearly violates the Big Bang narrative. So the Quran verse has been categorically debunked or to give credit to its ancestor, I must say that the creation story of the epic of Gilgamesh has been debunked.